Hello and welcome to our dear colleagues, supporters and friends joining us virtually and in person for today's panel, Dissident Artist in Exile. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, we are really thank you, thankful to participate in Documenta 15 this year and host this panel in the beautiful city of Kassel in Germany. Thank you very much. My name is Alicia Quiñones and I'm the America's Regional Coordinator for PEN International. PEN International celebrates literature and promotes freedom of expression. PEN is a global community of writers and artists with centers in more than a hundred of countries. PEN is a non-political organization and holds a special consultative status at the United Nations. This panel is hosted by Artists at Risk Connection, a project of PEN, of PEN America, the American chapter of PEN International, uh, ARC, ARC, safeguards the right of artistic freedom of expression and ensures that artists and cultural professionals everywhere can live and work without fear. ARC is connecting more than 500 uh, threatened artists around the world. Uh, and this work that we are trying to do every single day uh, is protecting us, of course, is protecting artists, but as well, we are, we are trying to provide help to all these artists with urgent, uh, urgent relocation funds, legal aid, immigration council, public advocacy, emergency grants, fellowship, and other kinds of, su of support. An important part of our work is to document about abuses against artists and help them to work free freely. For example, before, during, and following the histor historic protest in Cuba last year and protest defending artistic freedom, we have been working extensively with artists, writers, activists to shed light on the systematic censorship, harassment, and exile artists, journalists, and writers on the island. Whatever through press statements as well, meetings with international organizations and direct support for Cuban artists in exile, as we are doing today, this panel, to talk about the importance, the relevance of art in our current society, in our world. We believe that the crea creative, creative artistic act requires not only freedom, but also it requires the idea of the future freedom if art is worried about where, whether there will be freedom tomorrow, then the art is, will not be free today. If the artists are afraid to choose what they want to talk about, 
then their choices will not be determined by their talent. If we have no confidence in freedom, then we are not free. For that reason, we are here today to listen to all these important artists uh, and to learn about their artistic experiences, their artistic life, their art, their art, and also about their life in exile. I'm very pleased to present my colleague or colleague, Sarah Dogan. Sarah Dogan is one of the most important artists in this contemporary world. Uh, Sarah Dogan is a Kurdish painter and journalist as well. Uh, she's a Kurdish, Kurdish artist, journalist, and activist from Dijabar, called Turkey. She co-founded Jinha, the first all-woman press agency, where she worked from, from 2012 to, to 2016, when it was shut down by the Turkish government. Dogan has been awarded with several prizes, including the Musa Anter Special Jury Prize in Kurdish Journalism and the Metin Goktepe Journalism Award, one of the most prestigious awards in Turkey. She has a very, very long story and experience in art, and I want to give her the floor, and it is a honor to have you with us. Thank you very much, and welcome, Sera. Thank you. Uh, ben dil bilmiyorum o yüzden yani İngilizce bilmiyorum. Uh, Ayşe bana yardım edecek. Teşekkür ederim. Uh, ben Zehra. Uh, gazeteciyim ve ressamım. Uh, 2016 yılında tutuklandım ve 2019 yılında cezaevinden çıktım. Uh, aslında kendimi çok fazla anlatmaktan ziyade bir resmimi göstermek istiyorum. I want to show photo. Yes, we, we uh, please if we can uh, present it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very happy to be here. My name is Zehra Doan, and thank you also for the introduction. Uh, before I start, um, I'm Zehra and I was um, jailed in 2016 until 2019. Instead of speaking, I would like to show a painting. This is a painting which I made. Sen anlatır mısın? Mm -hmm. 2016 yılında ben burada çalıştığım yılda ve yani Nusaybin şehrindeydim. Nusaybin 2016 yılında yakılıp yıkılan bir şehirdi. This painting I made in 2016 when I was also in Nusaybin working. Mm -hmm. Türkiye Türk Devleti Türkiye bölüm yani Türkiye'de bulunan yani aslında dört parçaya bölünmüş Kürdistan'ın Türkiye tarafında kalan bölümde büyük bir katliam gerçekleştirdi ve binlerce insan hayatını kaybetti yüz binlerce insan evinden evini terk etmek zorunda kaldı yüz binlerce ev yakılıp yıkıldı şehir havadan bombalandı. In 2000 um... The Turkish state, the Turkish army, was active in this area. As you know, Turkey is, uh, has four different parts, and in one part they made this in Nusaybin was one part of uh, the Turkish army which was doing a genocide, and thousands of people lost their homes, thousands of people died and uh, have to flee. Ben de demin gördüğünüz fotoğrafın e, aynısını yaptım ve bu böyle bir resim yaptım. Bu resmi yaptığım için de 3 yıl tutuklandım ve cezaevinde kaldım. The situation in the image uh, which in the photograph which you have seen I I I paint this situation also to keep this uh, remembers and uh, because of this painting I was then jailed for 3 years. Anlatacak çok şey var oradaki döneme dair ee, ama benim bir arkadaşım e, sürekli şunu söyler e, Lat o dönemde o, olan olaylarda 
sesimiz yüksek ama yüreğimiz alçak. Hep bunu söylerdi. O yüzden bu söz bana göre çok güçlü bir söz. O yüzden ben aslında çok konuşmaktan ziyade o dönemde çektiğim bir videoyla o dönemi anlatmak istiyorum. I have to tell lot of things. I, I have lot of stories to tell. But a friend of mine is used to say our stories are, our heart is uh, very, I don't know how to translate, kalbimiz. Sesimiz yüksek ama ah. kalbimiz alçak. Mm -hmm. Our voice is very high, but our heart is more low. That is the reason why I would uh, show you now a film to understand the situation in this area. Can you start the video?
2016 yılında e, bu şehir bombalandı. Nusaybin ve yüz binlerce insan evsiz kaldı. Yüzlerce insan da katledildi ve 10 binin üzerinde insan da hala cezaevinde sırf bu şehirden. Ve bu videonun çekildiği yerde şu an yok. Havadan bombalandı ve yani hiçbir haritadan silindi. As I told you in, in the beginning, in the, in the east part of Turkey, in the Kurdish area, in 2016, there was a bombing in the city. Uh, we saw the video now, and thousands of people were died there in this, were killed in, in this city. Many people, thousands of people lost their homes, and thousands of people were arrested by the Turkish government, by the army. That was the film about the documentation of uh, this year in 2016 in this city. Thank you very much and welcome for the, uh, welcome for the people who is joining us now in person and uh, by video. Uh, I want to say that in 2017, Sarah, uh, 17, Sarah Dogan was sentenced to two years and 10 months in prison for creating a painting of a Turkish city heavily damaged by state security forces. On February uh, 2019, it, uh, she was released after spending six, his, 600 days in, in prison. With other changes, charges painting, Pending against her, Dogan now is living in exile. So thank you so much for coming today. Uh, I want to say thank you for your speech today. Uh, for these people who is joining now the, the panel, we are talking about threats against artistic expression uh, and how these, uh, these uh, threats are racing globally. Many artists have not all their choice but to go into exile to to, to ensure the, their, their livelihood. This panel is exploring how artists navigate life in exile after facing harsh persecution in their home countries. Uh, I'm very glad to welcome our second panelist today, Samane Atev. Uh, she's a, vis a visual artist from, uh, from Iran. Samane Atev uh, is also a very important artist in the art contemporary art. Uh, she was born in, in 1998 in the town of Bandar Abbas in the south of Iran. Also, she has trained to be a software engineer. She's a full-time artist who has been creating compulsively all her life. Samane contributes her skills and abilities as a self-thought outs outsider artist to empower women and support basic human rights. Samane's artistic voice is powerful and personal, while her aesthetic vocabulary is unmistakable. So please welcome Samane Atev, and thank you very much for your time, for being here today. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, uh, I don't know what uh, I can say, but uh, in, uh, in my drawing, uh, I want to talk about my uh, collection that uh, name is uh, Woman in Black, because I had two collections. Uh, this drawing, it's a woman in a prison uh, that I had a collection about uh, situation of women in, in the prison. But uh, if, uh, uh, please show the drawing. Uh, I want uh, especially speak about the, my collection that name is Woman in Black because maybe it's uh, a little bit difficult uh, to <laughs> uh, understand. Uh, uh, this one is also about uh, collection Woman in Prison. Uh, Yes, uh, 
this collection, it was uh, mm, about, uh, the name is Woman in Black. But uh, actually, I, I want to talk uh, in this collection uh, about the unaccept, uh, unaccept, hidden and unexplained feelings and tendency that hide in every life. I use the hijab as a cover over the human mind to show that human hide many of their feelings and desires. We can see this hiding are very common in society with a totalitarian government, especially for women that uh, we can see in um, Middle East uh, uh, countries. Uh, many, many. Uh, actually, I, I can't speak very well. <laughs> I speak in my drawing and uh, I'm not good in talking, really. <laughs> I'm talking with my drawing and uh, my feelings, my protests, everything. Uh, is in my drawings. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I can't explain very well my drawings, but I'm sure you, when you look, you can uh, get my feelings and that's what and why I say these things. And uh, it's very clear why, because I came from a country that I'm sure you know the situation in, in uh, this area. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you very much for showing this important piece of art. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, hopefully, if you want to uh, ju just to, to, to see the paintings, you can recover the conversation and look at this and look of the website of Samane as well, you can see many of, of, of her works. Uh, I want to introduce our colleague, Janelis Núñez. Uh, she's, a, uh, she's joining us uh, from, uh, from her house, I think. Uh, Janelis Núñez Leiva, uh, she's an art historian. She's from Cuba. Janelis is a curator, art critic, and activist from Havana with artist Luis Manuel Otero, she co-founded the Museum of Dissident in Cuba, as well as the first independent Biennale in Havana, the Cero Cero Biennale. She has actively participate, participated in the campaign against Decree 349, which restricted artistic freedom in Cuba. In December 2018, she created the San Isidro movement the protect, to protect freedom of expression in Cuba. In 2019, exhausted after two years of continuous activism and a strong repression by state security, she decided not to return from a trip she made to Europe. She currently lives in Madrid and continues to be an active member of the San Isidro movement. Welcome, Janelis, to this panel, and thank you so much for being here today with us. So, bravo. Hola, hola, Please. muchas gracias. Adelante, eh, Janelis. Eh, bueno, a, hablaré por, por pedazos para que puedas hacer un poco la, la traducción. Eh, lo primero es agradecer la invitación y, bueno, y segundo, un poco comentarles. Eh, que creo que para mí es, es muy importante, es, com, es compartirles ante todo la situación de Luis Manuel Otero Alcántara, que está preso desde el 11 de julio, y, y que en días recientes hemos eh, tenido noticias de él, noticias que nos preocupan, y que, que quiero empezar un poco hablando sobre, sobre su caso. I want to say thank you to all of you uh, for this panel. Uh, I'm Janelis Núñez and I want to talk about the work that we have been doing in Cuba, but as well uh, about Luis Manuel Otero Alcántara, who is an, a Cuban artist who is in prison and we have worked together many pieces and I want to 
to, to, to, to, to talk about him as well. Sí, lo primero que quería comentarles es que el pasado 4 de agosto eh, Luis Manuel recibió visita de su familia en la prisión de Guanajay, en Artemisa, donde se encuentra eh, cumpliendo la sanción de cinco años de cárcel. Eh, de ahí nos llega la noticia que sufrió una agresión por parte de otro preso, de un preso común, y que debido a esto, Luis Manuel ha sido trasladado a una celda que está tapiada, además, y en solitario. Es decir, no le permiten socializar con otros presos en, en, en el destacamento en el que se encuentra. Eh, también que ha padecido dengue, que es una enfermedad que ahora mismo eh, ha, está cobrando vidas en, en Cuba eh, por la falta de higiene, en fin, por la crisis en todos los sentidos que hay en el país y le han impedido recibir cartas y libros, eh, incluso cosas relacionadas con arte dentro de la prisión. No sé si quieres eh, traducir esa, esa parte, que te la... Sí, eh, well, eh, I want to say that the last communication we had with my colleague Luis Manuel Otero Alcántara, a Cuban artist, was the past 4th of August. He's in prison eh, with... Uh, he's in prison because the, the, the government is trying to silence him for five years. And during this uh, last, during the, from, from that moment, we know that he is uh, suffering because he's in a, in, a, in a prison. He's only, he's isolated from others. He is also facing, he's sick because the lack, the lack of health conditions in, uh, in the prison and he's unable to receive letters of communication from others in Cuba in the prison. More. Sí, gracias. Eh, lo otro que quería eh, compartirles es que a pesar de, de, de este estado de incertidumbre y de, eh, y de violencia en el que se encuentra Luis, eh, él ha conseguido... Eh, mover o sacar o a través de, no, de la coordinación de, de Claudia Guerlui, que es otra curadora y miembro del Movimiento San Isidro, y a través de mí, eh, distintas acciones de las cuales me, me gustaría compartirles alguna de, de, algunas de ellas. Más que nada las principales eh, motivaciones ¿no? de, estas, de estas obras de arte realizadas en prisión. Despite of the conditions that he has, he's facing in the in the in prison, he sent some art pieces to to show, and we want to show you this uh, this artwork now and to explain uh, the sense of this artistic work. Mm. Eh, una de las primeras obras que Luis, eh, eh, eh, digamos, eh, estando en prisión, pues. Eh, pudo sacar es, eh, bueno, la idea principalmente es a través de eh, llamadas telefónicas que nos comunicamos con él, eh, fue la obra de Carta de Renuncia, que más que nada era una invitación, a, a, una invitación abierta y pública para que eh, cualquier cubano que lo deseara eh, escribiera eh, la que sería, la que pod podría ser la Carta de Renuncia del actual presidente Miguel Díaz Canel. Eh, pues eh, recibimos las colaboraciones de varias, eh, varios amigos, colegas, periodistas independientes, incluso artistas, eh, un poco eh, compartiendo ¿no? eh, la, la ficción de esta carta de, de renuncia de Díaz Canel y esto es una dinámica que en el caso de Luis, incluso dentro del caso del movimiento San Isidro, es algo que se, que se repite, ¿no? la invitación a participar eh, bueno, si quieres, eh, te dejo a que, a que, a que traduzca. She's saying that one of these artistic pieces are called Carta de Renuncia, eh, so requesting, the, uh, requesting to, the, to the president of, of Cuba, eh, eh, Miguel Díaz Canel, eh, to dismiss, to, just to, to finish uh, his, term in, uh, his term in Cuba. So they are sharing this letter with other people in Cuba to sign it. Es para firmarla, ¿verdad? No, para escribirla. 
okay, que cada, so cada persona escribiera la que podría ser la carta de renuncia de Díaz Canel. So this collective uh, piece, artistic piece, is requesting to write collectively a letter to the president to finish his term in Cuba. Y esto, esta dinámica de convocar el, más que nada el uso de las redes sociales para, para, para estas obras, de convocar ya no solo a la comunidad artística o intelectual, sino a todos los ciudadanos, es algo que se repite en, otras, en otros proyectos de Luis Manuel eh, que ha lanzado previamente. Y ahí está eh, el, la, la obra de Mi cartel por un cambio en Cuba, eh, a través de la cual él invitaba a las personas a imaginar cuál sería el cartel eh, a usar eh, durante una eh, eh, posible eh, manifestación pública en Cuba. Este es, esto es importante, más que nada por el, la importancia de, de la participación en estas obras, pero también la importancia de ensayar y de colocar en el imaginario social la posibilidad de una protesta. Esta obra que fue en el 2020, la obra de mi cartel por el cambio en Cuba, eh, yo creo que es parte también de las semillas que ha sembrado ya no solo el movimiento San Isidro, sino toda la historia del arte cubano en todas sus acciones de resistencia para que se diera lo que pasó el 11 de julio. Now I want to talk about uh, Mi Cartel por el Cambio en Cuba, which is, means my poster for the change in Cuba. Uh, it is also a, a, a collaborative artistic piece, and he's uh, requesting uh, for a, a public, he's requesting for other artists and people in Cuba to to create their own posters of, of requesting for a manifest for, for protest in Cuba. They are trying to imagine the protest in Cuba because they don't have this right. This artistic uh, piece and collaborative piece was created in 2020. Uh, this dynamic is starting in social media, but as well in, I think in, in Cuba as well, if I'm right. Uh, and it also shows The, the story of artistic uh, movement in Cuba, mainly uh, which in the, pro in the recent protest in, in, to, in the last year in July, in 11 July. Sí. Eh, bueno, no sé si ya luego podríamos hablar un poco más, pero bueno, eh, es, es, quería más que nada aprovechar esta plataforma o este espacio de encuentro para, para hablar de, bueno, el caso de Luis y del, y del resto de los presos políticos en Cuba, que son más de mil presos políticos, eh, y que, est eh, digamos, estamos en medio de, de esta crisis global por el tema de la guerra con Ucrania y porque al final la dinámica también de las noticias hace que el tema Cuba eh, quede a un lado, pues siempre aprovecho todos estos espacios para poner en el centro el tema de los presos políticos, de los artistas que están en prisión, que no solo es el caso de Luis, es el caso de, también de Michael Osobo, eh, y otros raperos, hay otros raperos, incluso hay eh, otros músicos de hip hop, eh, y más que nada porque creo que es importante poner en el centro por la situación de precariedad en la que están ya no solo los presos, sino las familias que se ocupan de esos presos y porque son, digamos, el eslabón más débil dentro de la cadena de represión que se vive en Cuba en este momento. And I want to say thank you, and uh, we, we can uh, talk about it later, but I want to talk about Luis Manuel Otero Alcántara, who is one of the prisoners together with a, hundred, a, a thousand of pre political prisoners in Cuba in this moment. We know that the global crisis could be also, it is, uh, we are talking about Ukraine and many other uh, countries, but Cuba is also uh, facing a very difficult moment now. Uh, we have Luis Manuel Otero Alcantara, this Cuban artist, but as well Michael Osorbo, a rapper, but also a lot of musicians and another artist in prison. These prisoners as are the, the, the weak part of this repression wave that we are facing in Cuba. 
Sí, ya luego eh, retomaré alguna de, de, de los proyectos del museo y, y del movimiento de San Isidro, pero bueno, un poco para la presentación y también dar pie a, a las preguntas que tienen ustedes. Thank you, thank you very much uh, for this and muchísimas gracias. Thank you, Janelis, for your participation. We are still uh, talking about it. And we want to start with some questions uh, to the panelists today. Uh, the first question before to open this debate to the public as well uh, is what is the meaning of art for today's society and why should art matter in this difficult time we live in who wants to start with this uh, with this uh, question estamos preguntando que cuál es el significado del arte para nuestra sociedad contemporánea y por qué el arte debería importar en esta eh, en estos tiempos difíciles en los que vivimos who wants to <laughs> Yeah, as I can speak very well, so I start to speak. Uh, I I think uh, today today art is a way of communication between the people in the world uh, to understand each other better. For me, was and is passing through the adversity of life. I think it's the same for the people. Uh, uh, you know, lose the, uh, listening to a piece of music or looking at a painting takes you away from everyday life for a moment. And uh, for me, it's like that. Zahra? <laughs> yeah. Ben... Bir şeyden örnek vermek istiyorum. Çalıştığım mülteci kampında, Irak Kürdistan'ında bir mülteci kampında çalışıyorum ve 30 yıldır onlar o ambargoda ve ülkelerine geri dönemiyorlar. Oradaki bir kadın müzik şarkılarla söyleyen kadın demişti ki sustuğum anda öldüğüm andır. Ve oradaki birçok üretim yapan insanlar aslında kendilerini sanatla var etmişlerdi. Yani bir ifade biçimi olarak mesela bir bir tarihle ilgilenmek, yazmak ya da hiçbir şey söylemeden durmak bu bir kendine göre bir sanatsal bir ifadedir ve bence de böyle. O yüzden bu, bu çok önemli ve her gün her gün umudunu bir gün ülkesine geri dönecek e, gibi yeniden taze tutmak bu zaten başlı başına bir sanat. E, o yüzden bence beni de bu e, bu tür bir sanat e, ayakta tutuyor. Bana göre bu önemli. I was. Why is it so loud? Okay. Um, I was very active in a refugee camp where I worked also, and so there was a woman. There's echo. Why? So much echo. Yeah. Now? Can you hear me now? Ah, oh, thank you. I was very active in a refugee camp where I was um, worked and there was a woman, she was arrested more than 30 years and she said one day when I stopped to speak then I'm died. That means I'm died. And uh, so the woman and uh, many others like her were sustained themselves with art in the refugee camp where they had been living more than 30 years. 10,000 of, uh, of the people who were in the camp had also survived in this way. Everyone, everyone's art, artistic style is different. Some just sat at the door of their tent without speaking, some wrote, some told tales, some recorded in their heads the formulas for, for, so, for example, herbal medicines, and they learned in the mountains of the country, they have been forced to live as children. Some of them stayed believing that there's no matter what, but then, but hoping there was, there's one day uh, that they will return and uh, to be, to, to return. Believing in this, 
and maintaining this hope every day is it's not art, but in the camp I worked in in, the, in in this in in this camp in Iraq, this is how I recognize that people can survive with art. And therefore, art is very important for me. Janelis, eh, sí, ¿quieres? Uh, sí. Sí, agrego, quiero agregar solo un ejemplo en el caso de Cuba y de forma reciente. Eh, el, eh, es, el, es el tema de, de la canción Patrivida, ¿no? La canción Patrivida que nace de eh, cinco eh, autores, eh, dos de ellos están en prisión. Eh, uno de ellos está en prisión, otro está en el exilio, eh, y el resto son autores reconocidos, eh, los cinco son negros, que es importante, eh, eh, ha generado y ya generó eh, un... un eh, eh, eh, se logró convertirse en un himno, y eso, es, eh, y eso es algo que desde el mundo del arte lo podemos ofrecer a las discusiones, a la resistencia ciudadana, y creo que es una herramienta poderosa, ¿no? Eh, en el caso de la música que está, eh, que habla a un público eh, eh, mucho mayor, ¿no? Eh, y en el caso de Cuba, el impacto de gestos como este, de la canción Patrivida, ha hecho eh, que las personas se reconozcan con un poder, y eso es algo importante en un país. Eh, la apatía política la, por culpa de la saturación el adoctrinamiento y la represión y tal, ha hecho que, que la, la ciudadanía se desentienda ¿no? y yo creo que gestos es como esto, como la canción de Patri Vida lo que ha generado eh, es un buen ejemplo ¿no? de, de todo lo que puede aportar el arte a, a los movimientos sociales, a, la, a los procesos eh, de cambio en países eh, como, es, como puede ser el caso de Cuba, eh, donde hay un régimen autoritario. In the case of Cuba, we have, for example, five eh, a, a very eh, good song called Patria y Vida. Eh, eh, the song was written by eh, five authors. Two of them are in prison and one in exile now. The other two uh, were fa a famous artist. Uh, this song, for example, created a social movement. It was important because it was an, a, a very powerful tool for, uh, for society in Cuba. It means that uh, the social impact that the song created uh, was important. It demonstrates as well uh, how the society could take this power from the music and from the art to, to create a, a change, a social movement. Uh, it is a, a good example how the art uh, and the music can give, can give um, a, a, a power to the society, for example, in Cuba. Yes. Okay, this is more yeah. or less, and oh, okay. So do you want to say something? Okay, fantastic. So um, before we are moving to to the to the questions for the public, it could be very important as well. Uh, I want to ask one more question to our panelists, uh, and this is uh, first to to Sarah. How did you reinvent or creating your art and revealed this passion for your art and journalist? once you were in exile? Uh, how did she is create, reinventing or, uh, her art and revealing this passion for journalism and art and artistic work uh, once you, uh, was she's now in exile? or from the exile, okay? Yeah, ben ilk, 
cezaevinden çıkar çıkmaz kendimi Avrupa'da buldum ve hiç istemediğim bir ülkedeydim. Hiç istemediğim bir e, kıtadaydım aslında. Hayalini bile kurmadığım bir yerdeydim. Ve aslında motivasyonum nasıl sanat üretirim diye değil aslında motivasyonum nasıl hayatta kalabilirim, ben nasıl nefes alabilirim aslında buydu. Yani benim arayışım sanat üretmekten çok daha çok nefes almak ve bunu da çok iyi biliyordum ülkesinden çok uzakta olan sanatçıların birçoğu aslında hiç daha kendi ülkesindeyken bir sanat üretemediler. Ee, ve o yüzden ben e, buraları bırakıp dört parçaya bölünmüş bir Kürdistan var ve dört parçasından bir tarafına gittim ve orada Irak Kürdistan'ında yaşamaya başladım. Şimdi oradayım, jinolojide yaşıyorum, jinolojide çalışıyorum ve kendimi çok daha iyi hissediyorum çünkü kadınlar için mücadele ediyoruz, katledilmiş kadınlar için mücadele ediyoruz ve ben orada üretiyorum. Çünkü ben lokal bir sanatçıyım, hiçbir zaman uluslararası bir sanatçı olmak istemedim. Benim kendi lokalliğim, benim özelliğimi yaratıyor, benim ifade biçimimi yaratıyor. Um, I'm, I'm, I was free after I was in prison and uh, then I found myself in Germany and my motivation is not only to make art, my motivation is to breathe, to can breathe and f- It was not always possible, but this is what I try. I need to breathe, and I, I am working on it, how to breathe. And I know also a lot of artists who can't do that, who can't do their artworks, and who also can't breathe. Uh, Kurdistan, the Kurdish land, is divided in four parts, and I'm living in the part of Iraq, the Kurdish area in Iraq and uh, I'm happy to be there because I can I can do a lot of things in the lo- locality of gen- genealogy uh, because I'm I I define myself as a local artist I'm not an international locust I need also to be anchored in a local way thank you very much And taking this idea of of the exile and this all this uh, artistic influence that you have have, uh, I want to ask almost the same question to to Samani. How has exile influenced you are today? It changed you. Uh, it means probably uh, the exile have has changed your view of the world and of the world. Or, or your, tell tell us about it. Uh, I believe that no person should be exiled because because of her beliefs. I uh, dream every day. After three years, I dream every day like my drawings. I uh, uh, come back to my homeland. Uh, uh, you know, I I, uh, I love my country. I should be there. It's my homeland, and uh, I'm sure it may not be like this today, but no one knows what tomorrow will bring us. I am in exile with a sweet kiss. I have my dreams, and uh, I believe that uh, these dreams uh, will come true. Uh, Now, uh, my outlook uh, has definitely changed. Uh, today, uh, despite all the nostalgia and the problems of uh, immigration, I have found a bigger and more open vision. Women's problems are not limited to my country. Many countries have more, um, many countries have less. Uh, my effort as a small artist is to give the voice of women whose voice and stories have never been heard it's it's like that 
thank you, Sera and Samane, for for uh, for these uh, points uh, about the exile and the freedom uh, and artistic freedom. And uh, now for Janelis, uh, you talked about uh, this uh, so this social power that the art has had in uh, in Cuba so in Cuban society. So at what point were you aware that art had a great social uh, power to, uh, to just to encourage people uh, in Cuba. Eh, nos gustaría saber, eh, Janelis, eh, eh, cómo eh, o en qué momento tú estabas eh, consciente, digo, no consciente, estabas al tanto de que sabías que el arte tenía un gran poder social, social en la sociedad de Cuba que ha, se ha movilizado a través del arte. Eh... Eh, eh, fue un proceso, fue un proceso y ha sido un proceso largo de saber eh, lo que podemos aportar y cómo hemos aportado y, eh, y lo que ha significado el trabajo que hemos hecho en colectivo, que es importante eh, y, y, y es importante más en un, en un contexto donde el gobierno, el régimen todo el tiempo quiere aislarte, ¿no? Entonces, eh, apostar por, por lo colectivo, pese a, a diferencias eh, ideológicas, pese a, a los egos, pese a, a, a la falta, digamos, que, que puede existir de empatía o de, o de la poca eh, eh, formación que tenemos ¿no? para, para autoorganizarnos, en el caso cubano, digo, eh, yo creo que ha sido, lo que hemos conseguido ha sido como de pequeños pasos, ¿no? Eh, principalmente, eh, el, el, el, por lo menos en el caso del movimiento San Isidro, el haber eh, contado con personas como Mauri Pacheco, como Iris Ruiz, que el otro día estaban hablando de Orly Zona Franca, eh, contar con su Andri del Río, eh, que es un músico eh, y coordinador de Puños Arriba, contar con Michelle Mato, que es coordinador de Rotilla, todos son estos eventos míticos y, y espacios míticos y, eh, y movimientos míticos, pues no, digamos, nos dio muchas experiencias a nosotros para, para saber cómo transmitir y cómo comunicarnos con, con la comunidad, eh, con, la, con la ciudadanía, ¿no? Eh, y, y, y fue un descubrimiento junto uniendo experiencias pasadas, ¿no? Y recuperando esa memoria. Eh, no sé si estoy hablando mucho y podrás ahí hacer la traducción. In the Cuban case, uh, uh, there is a long process, uh, and we have, but we have, uh, we have given a lot of uh, things to the society. Uh, coming from the art. In a, when a regi the regime in Cuba, they want to isolate artists. They want to put the artists out of the society, out of the discussions. And uh, the art itself has been a process to take social uh, movements. So the first step for the social movement. For that reason, it, it's part of the relevance of art in, in the societies. Uh, we have many people who are working, for example, Amaury, Amaury Pacheco and Iris Ruiz, Michelle Matos. They have had exhibitions or specific events to provide, a, a, I mean, social movements in Cuba. Más o menos. Okay. Sí, sí. Eh, okay. y... Sí, y más que nada, eh, eh, yo creo que eso fue lo que nos, ya luego ver la repercusión en redes sociales y ver eh, el, cómo la, también la comunidad artística se juntaba, eh, que es algo que no había pasado en, en, mucho, en, en muchos años, yo creo que pues el triunfo de la revolución no ha pasado, lo que pasó el 27 de noviembre de 2020, yo creo que Ahí es una muestra de que el trabajo de tantos artistas durante estos 60 años en contra del régimen, en contra de la censura, pues ha dado sus resultados, ¿no? Y, y ahí está, ahí está la prueba. Está en el 11 de julio, está en el 27 de noviembre, está en todos los gestos de solidaridad del exilio 
eh, está el impacto del trabajo de tantos artistas que han sufrido prisión, que han sufrido exilio, eh, como es mi caso ahora, y que en muchos casos se han visto eh, pues aislados, ¿no? ya no solo por el régimen, sino también por la comunidad, incluso por el mundo del arte, porque es difícil incorporarte a las dinámicas una vez que estás en exilio, en fin. Eh, pero yo creo que estamos en ese proceso de formación, de reformación, ¿no? de, de ciudadanía y de, y de comunidad en el caso cubano. Bueno, well, uh, she's saying that we believe that the work that we have been doing for the last 60 years uh, related to art or fighting uh, or trying to to uh, to exercise the freedom of artist the freedom of exp expression uh, now is giving us a good results and part of that uh, results are the events on 27 of November in 2020 and the mass the, the, the demonstrations in July uh, 21 the last the past year uh, the art is giving us this uh, kind of opportunity in the ground this uh, solidarity between artists to fight against censorship more or less okay sí. and we want to open the the floor to to the public if you have any questions to the artist i don't know if you have uh, please Bueno, para mí es un placer tener a Yanelis aquí, Yanelis Tania, por acá. Hola, <ríe> Se te extraña tal? muchísimo. Eh, ojalá pudieras estar acá con nosotros. Eh, nada, algún día, pronto. Eh, well, I have a kind of tough question because, uh, like you guys, I, you know, I have similar experiences, and I want to understand because each case is super intense, super you know, life or death situation is really limit. I would like to understand how you uh, propose to the community at large, to the world, uh, this, your experience or the goals that you want to achieve, because it's very difficult for the people, I don't know, in Finland or the US or places where none of this is happening to understand your context. And also they don't have the time, unfortunately, to three hours for you to explain everything. So how do you negotiate in your art, in, in the case of uh, Janelis, in her writing um, and in her and the activism and also in art, both? How are you going to address the complexities of this so people are not uh, scared or, or rejecting? This is too intense. Like how do you deal with that? Because in the case of Cuba, Janelli knows this people are very ignorant of what is going on. So before you say what is happening to you, you have to three hours explaining what happened before, no? So how do you deal with that in your art and in your activism? I don't know, is it, is it entendió? Okay. Yeah, activism is ben bir e, Kürt bir sanatçı olarak yani sanat üreten bir Kürt olarak aslında şöyle bir şey söyleyebilirim benim doğal olarak ve e, beni buraya yani beni bu ifade biçimine iten şey aslında aktivizmim o yüzden bir gaz gazetecilik geçmişim var Kürt kadın gazeteciler arasında yer aldım şimdi de jinolojide çalışıyorum ve Irak Kürdistan'ında Kürdistan'a gibi tehlikeli bir yerde çalışıyorum. Ee, yani orada bütün kadınlarla beraber, e, yani mijinoloji akademisinde yer alan kadınlarla beraber kaybolmuş e, ve sesi hiç duyulmamış, hiç bilinmemiş e, veya bilinmiş bir şekilde bilinmiş yazarların, e, sanat üreticilerin e, işlerini toplayıp, revize edip, ee, yeniden bir büyük bir kütüphane oluşturuyoruz. Aynı zamanda bir kolektifimiz de var orada. Hobun yani kendinden olmak, kendini bilmek, kendini bilerek ifade etmek diye bir kadın kolektifimiz var. Ee, Irak Kürdistan'ında yaşayan kadınlardan oluşuyor bu kolektif. İlk e, sergimizi de bu yıl e, yaptık. E, geçen kış ayında yaptık. 
e, bana göre bir Kürt olarak ee, bir aktivizm e, benim vazgeçilmezim çünkü benim ifade biçimim ben çocukluğumdan beri bir aktivizmin içerisinde hiç bilmediğim aslında hiç de tercih etmediğim e, politik bir mahallede bir Kürt kimliğine ait olarak doğdum ve bu yüzden çocukluğumdan beri bir taş atmaktan gözaltına alındım polise taş atmaktan dolayı ve kendimi doğal olarak doğal sebeplerden dolayı bir aktivizmin bir mücadelenin içerisinde yer aldım. Şimdi de kendimi sama- sanatla ifade ed- ediyorum ama ben sanatımı Avrupa'da da Avrupalı sanatçılar gibi asla yapamam. O yüzden diyorum ben lokal bir sanatçıyım. Benim lokalliğim benim mücadeleye itiyor. Benim lokalliğim beni daha amatör, daha küçük ama daha da köklü ve daha derin bir ifade biçimine götürüyor. Nasıl ki mücadelem kolektif e, ol, olmazsa olmazı, kolektif, kolektivizm, e, sanatım da öyle. Cezaevinde yaptığım işler de öyle. Cezaevindeki arkadaşlarımla beraber yaptım. O yüzden benim ifade biçimim bu. Sorry for... <gülüyor> I try to translate it because it was so many points. Um, as an Kurdish, yeah, as an Kurdish artist, um, it's in the nature that I'm Kurdish, and that is the reason why I'm also activist. So. I'm activist, but I worked also as a journalist and researcher. And um, I worked in, in the Kurdish area in Iran, which is like a dangerous place also for humans, not only for me, in general for humans. And um, with all uh, these this difficulties in this area, um, we artists have to know from where we are and whom we are and where we are. And we started, um, we need to know that very clear from where we are. And today, for example, um, I, I create, we created a woman uh, activist group, a collective, and we're starting also to make exhibition. We made an exhibition. And we work with artists, but I'm, I have to say also that for me, the local anchor is important. I started also to speak about my locality or my local anchor. Because, because I'm a local anchor, um, maybe you can say it's amateur, but I, I don't see that because when you work really in a locality and you know the situation so i think it's a bit it's deeper your understanding of the situation is deeper and the art which you are doing or the, the exhibition can be also deeper and can be open a deeper perspective on what's going what's happening there um And also the experience to, to be in, in jail was bringing me to the point. And I'm not an international uh, artist, but I'm happy to be a local artist, which is connected to the local situation and can use the language of, of art and also of journalism or activism. And to, to bring this together, it's important for me. No worries, I have more questions as well <laughs> in the meantime. Uh, just following the, the, the very interesting question about uh, how can we face uh, the challenge that uh, in exile, I want to ask uh, to Samane, uh, do you think art is resilience or resistance in exile? What do you think about this concept of resilience or, resi or resistance in exile? <laughs> It's a really difficult question. Uh, maybe the both. <laughs> uh, for me, it's resistance 
to adversity. Difficulty never ends in life, but art and this adversity. <laughs> it's very short, but yeah, it's, for me, it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, for Janelis, uh, uh, this is an important question because uh, sometimes we need to continue or act, well, not, not sometimes, we need to continue our activism or literature or artistic pieces and we want to influence in our countries. So in this sense, uh, how do you influence, po influence politically and socially uh, from exile and through your artistic work as well? Eh, pues, a ver, sigo, en mi caso, yo sigo vinculada al movimiento San Isidro, pues, pese a que es una, un, digamos, un colectivo que ha sido golpeado, ¿no? Eh, con presos, con exilios, con personas, eh, en el caso de Iris, que está enferma además y en Cuba no la trataron. Es un, digamos, un colectivo que también estábamos muy a gusto entre nosotros, ¿no? Es decir, teníamos una dinámica propia, conseguimos... Eh, debido al tiempo de trabajo juntos, eh, confiar eh, ¿no? entre nosotros, saber que, que, que éramos el apoyo de uno y otro. Y, y bueno, en estos momentos, con, digamos, la, eh, luego de tanto tiempo ya trabajando y, y a fuego cruzado ahí con el régimen, pues es complicado, es, es, pues ahí están las secuelas, ¿no? Eh, eh, en donde está cada quien y, el, y, el, y en los tiempos de recuperación que necesita cada quien que es importante bueno, te dejo traducir eso y ahora sigo para, o, o quieres que continúe la idea bueno, Pero, from, from, from my vale. side, eh, Janely says is, eh, I have been working, eh, I'm still working with Movimiento San Isidro who is a group of artists we are continue creating eh, actions and Uh, as a group of artists, uh, we have, we, we are also supporting some colleagues, for example, uh, Iris, uh, Iris uh, she is a, an, an, an, an, an actress, an artist as well. She was denied to have uh, health support in the hospital in Cuba because her activism. So we are still in contact to creating artistic networks. Mm. Eh, y, y bueno, también que era algo que le quería comentar, eh, pues eh, yo sigo trabajando en el Museo de la Disidencia, que es el, el proyecto del que hablaste tú al inicio, junto con Luis, y ahora me interesaba comentarles el, el, en, en una línea de investigación que hemos asumido sobre los huelguistas en Cuba, ¿no? Entonces estamos haciendo como un proceso de monitoreo y observación de no solo los huelguistas tras el 11 de julio, es decir, los presos políticos, pero también los familiares que se declaran en huelga en apoyo a, a, sus, a, su, a sus seres queridos que están en prisión, y también otras expresiones eh, de huelgas colectivas, eh, nosotros las estamos, digamos, registrando y compartiendo en redes sociales. ¿Y por qué lo hacemos? Porque eh, es... es una, una acción que no es nueva, una, una acción que, que, que es, eh, por lo menos en el caso de Cuba, es una acción que se repite en el caso de los presos políticos, eh, porque es también una manera de apoyar la liberación de, de, de estas personas y, y también porque creemos que es importante la recuperación de la memoria para compartir experiencias, para saber que hay gestos que pueden eh, influenciar, que han tenido buenos resultados, gestos como las huelgas de hambre, que han tenido buenos resultados en, en, en sus exigencias, y por eso es una línea de investigación que ahora estamos desarrollando dentro del Museo de la Disidencia y que estamos compartiendo, digamos, varias de estas eh, investigaciones en redes sociales. Pero es algo que nos interesa, más que nada, eh, para, para acompañar a los huelguistas, que en este minuto se puedan estar eh, plantados, como se dice, en prisión, eh, para saber que es un gesto eh, histórico dentro de la resistencia y la oposición cubana, y que también hay buenos ejemplos de, eh, digamos, de, de huelgas que han sido exitosas, ¿no? que en sus eh, demandas eh, han, han, han sido cumplidas. ¿no? Y también hablar del deterioro ¿no? y de 
eh, el, que sufre también el cuerpo, digamos que todas esas aristas están en, en esta línea de investigación y, y bueno, y para nosotros es importante la recuperación de la memoria de la oposición eh, porque si, si ha habido 60 años de, de ese proceso revolucionario, también han habido eh, han existido ¿no? 60 años de, de procesos de oposición y de emancipación en Cuba y eh, para mí es vital eh, que la memoria de estos, de estos grupos pues, eh, se recupere y que la gente los conozca. Eh, in the Museum of the Dissidents, eh, we are doing uh, an important investigation. We are monitoring and uh, we are monitoring uh, what is the situation of the political prisoners, uh, and we can see how the family of these political prisoners they are, for example, uh, they are trying, they are doing a hunger strike to asking for the release of, of, of their family members. Uh, we are also we are monitoring this situation, but it also we are uh, trying to to write about the the historic memory, the historic activities, and the memory of this activism in Cuba. Uh, we are researching this in the Museum of the Dissidents. Uh, we see we can see how the hunger strikes are working well for for the case for their cases. And we also want to remember the group of artists that had that they did a lot of activist, activ activist, uh, activities, sorry, activities in the past 60 years. We want to keep this memory alive for the society. Muchas, muchas gracias, Janelis, por por esto. Thank you very much, Janelis. And I don't know if someone has any specific question for the artist, or we can continue. You want to ask something? Yeah. Okay. Well, we are continuing with the with the questions, so we can do another round. Is that, do you agree with that? Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> That's great. Uh, well, one question for Sarah Dogan is. Um, is what do you uh, what are the consequence what gender consequence can exile have for a woman artist I mean what is the consequence the main or the most important consequence for a woman artist uh, when you are in exile Yani bana göre aslında e, kadın olmak ve aynı zamanda e, ötekinin ötekisi olmak yani Kürt olmak e, ikisi de çok zor bir durum. E, şimdi mesela e, Türkiye'den gelen ve Avrupa'da yaşayan diğer sanatçılara göre çok daha dezavantajlı bir durumdayız. Çünkü onlar erkek e, ve onlar kendi ülkelerinde ya da kadınlara da baktığımızda onlar kendi ülkelerinde çok iyi üniversitelerde, çok iyi yerlerde okuyup e, buralara geldiler ve zaten dil avantajları vardı, dili biliyorlar. E, zaten e, daha önce gelmiş oldukları bir kıtaya yeniden gelmiş oluyorlar, burada yaşamış oluyorlar. Ama biz her şeye sıfırdan başlamak zorundayız ve bir e, sürgün olarak yaşamak zorundayız. Hiç kendimiz de seçmediğimiz, asla istemediğimiz bir yere gelmiş olmak zorundayız. Hem yaşam koşullarımızı düzeltmek zorundayız hem de aynı zamanda sanat üretimi yapmak zorundayız. Bu ikisi de çok çok zor. E, ve bunun yanı, bunun yanı sıra e, yani olumlu olan bir, bir şey varsa da seni egzotik bulmaları, sana ilginç bakmaları ama benim egzotik olmaktan çok ya da daha farklı durmaktan çok ya da farklı bir ifa, farklı bir hikaye sahip olmaktan çok benim bir ifade biçimim var. O yüzden de bu, bu aslında çok zor oluyor. Kendi sanat işini e, hem egzotize etmeden hem acite etmeden hem de aynı zamanda e, çok o marketinge girmeden bir şey 
şeyleri ifade edebilmek çok zor. Çünkü sanat üretiminden çok bunun sunumunda olacak şeyin tehlikesini daha çok düşünür oluyor, oluyoruz bir aslında sürgün sanatçıları olarak. Aslında bir yerde çok çok uzun anlattım. Ben Türkçe konuştuğum için çok uzatmak istemiyorum. Sağ ol, sağ ol. So, being both a woman and a Kurdish um, artist is for me maybe very important and it's a point and I want to elaborate more about that. Because amongst the group of the exiled or exiled uh, artist, we have to divide also exile white men unfortunately have a louder and stronger voice than the woman. This is maybe a very important point. And in the male world which we are in, of course, men are giving more space, even they are also in exile, even when they are also in exile than the exile woman. And um, starting from zero, it's for us also hard, for us exile, women in exile, artists in exile, and... Um, And in the same time, to try also to make art, uh, it's also hard. And what we experience, or what I experience at least, it's also to be always the exotic one. And uh, this is a really problem, to be the exotic one. And not seeing as artists, because it's something else then, because they are mentioning you like exotic and so on. And our problem is, I think, also that um, these things are coming together when you are in exile also, that people look at you as, yeah, as exotic. Instead of seeing that you are doing also art. Yeah. That's really interesting, the, the perspective of not only to talk about uh, the exile and how it could be seen that as something exotic, as Sarah said, but uh, as well, I'm connecting this, uh, this, uh, this question and this answer about men and, uh, and their art work uh, with the work of, Sa of Samane, but because you are very interested on women as well. And as a, as a, could you tell us more about how your art, art is, is, is, um, is working uh, is working or is trying to support uh, women because you're interested in gender issues as well. No, it's part of your your perspective. Yeah, because because I'm woman, <laughs> it's, and I experience all of the problem about the woman in in my country. Uh, every drawings, uh, it's it's my experience personally. And the many, many of the story behind of my drawings, it's the story, real story about the women in, in my country. So it's, uh, it's my concern, uh, the human of women, the, the um, primary <laughs> rights. It's, it's not uh, uh, the, the, the very basic rights in, uh, for each uh, human, I think. But uh, today, if I want to, to be honest, uh, yes, I have a lot of concern about women's rights. But today, in my country, people have a lot of problem, economic problem. Uh, and, you know, it, it's uh, now it's plus <laughs> to my, my problem, you know. Uh, When the people of a society are involved in economic problems and their social needs, they forget about art, I think. Uh, because their primary concern must be met. I don't know anything uh, about, you know, the, what is the reaction of governments and, you know, the, the, these things. But I... Yes, when I was in Iran, I, I wanted to, to do something for the, for the women, to, to, to give our rights. But today, when I look to, to the situation, it's, you know, 
after three years, it's very, very large than past. After, you know, three years, it's nothing. Really, it's nothing. But when I look, it's, it's like uh, 10 years I, I wasn't there and what's happened now. Uh, at, the, at the end of, uh, I want to say, I know this well, darkness and night will never last and the sun will rise again. I believe in bring days in my country and I am sure that soon the forgotten culture and civilization of my country will return to it again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we wanted to add of Yep, of course. Mm -hmm. Because I spoke before also with um with Seja and I wanted to add something because we wrote it down to this point and it fits very much in this question. Thank you for the question also. So in additionally, for example, they call me Turk. I'm speaking now for Zehra. But I'm not Turkish, I'm Kurdish. Even in the exhibition and catalogues I attend, they always write and wrote my biography uh, Turkish instead of Kurdish. So when I call them and ask to fix it, to change it, they say we cannot use such a concept especially in the exhibition when I attend uh, in the United States, for example. Um, why? This is a very important question also. Why? Because there's uh, no such country as Kurdistan, Kurdistan officially. But I'm, I'm a Turk and I was born... I'm not a Turk, but because I was born in Turkey. But why should I spend so much effort in many artists, they don't um, deal with these issues. I spend more time on such, such issues than on my production of my artworks. I give, um, this make, makes me also angry, and, um, and I think behind this, there's also like, an, not only doing me exotic, but and interested because I may be exotic for them, but also to separate in gender and racist in issue. It's also like a racist issue in, this, in regard of this nationality thing. Interesting. So we are closing. The, thank you very much. And uh, very important to, to address these, uh, these uh, concepts and this idea also in terms of our artistic ex expression and inclusion. And... Uh, Janelis, I don't, I don't want, I don't know if you want to give us a final uh, comment, uh, just to close this panel. Uh, por favor, si quieres darnos uh, algún comentario final y o conectado con esto. Gracias. Eh, bueno, en el ahora mismo se está dando como una una nueva oleada de exilio en el caso cubano y de exilio y de migración masiva eh, algo, es algo que se está repitiendo, digamos no y, y tenemos ya exilios históricos de, de mediano tiempo eh, espero que, que, que digamos las ventanas que se abrieron en Cuba principalmente dentro de la comunidad artística, pero también desde, desde la ciudadanía no el resurgir de de esa sociedad civil, pues eh, se mantenga aún afuera eh, y, y es algo difícil, porque enfrentarse al exilio, eh, eh, incorporarte a una sociedad que no conoces, y más en el caso de Cuba, que no es capitalista, que digamos que no, las dinámicas del capitalismo que, que se viven fuera no tienen nada que ver con las de Cuba, ni de las relaciones humanas, ni de los códigos de comunicación, ni nada por el estilo. Entonces es difícil porque tienes que adaptarte a un contexto nuevo y, y eh, recuperarte eh, y, y a la misma vez tratar de apoyar ¿no? lo que está pasando en Cuba. Entonces, eh, nada, solamente invito más que nada también a la comunidad internacional, a la comunidad artística internacional, eh, que se sigan preocupando por el tema Cuba, 
y, y, y por el tema de todos estos países que tienen, están en riesgo ya no solo los artistas, sino las mujeres, eh, eh, las minorías, eh, es una lucha que no para. Y, y me he dado cuenta de eso, en todos los lugares tenemos que poner la lucha ya no solo del país que dejamos, sino del nuevo país que nos acoge, ¿no? Y, y es una lucha de, de resistencia, es un poco ahí la idea, la, idea, la idea que quiero dejar, ¿no? Que hay momentos en que se debe hacer pausa, pero luego hay que incorporarse porque los derechos nos vuelven a quitar. Y, y nada, y muchas gracias por la invitación. Janelis is saying that um, she wants to say that now is a massive exile in Cuba uh, because the repression of the government, and she's she hopes that uh, the she hopes that the artists and the artistic groups are still working on on these issues outside of Cuba. The community in exile is strong, and they are. Uh, Uh, they are uh, still working on and facing uh, and trying to raise these concerns around the world. Uh, they they want to they are trying to keep this dynamic, this social dynamic from exile, uh, apart to adapt the life into in, in in in exile, which is difficult, is complicated. They are trying to support the people in Cuba. Uh, they invite to all the community, the international artistic community, to keep aware of Cuban issues. Uh, and uh, well, and and she's th say she says thank you to, to for this panel for being part of this panel. Thank you. And any final thank you very much. Muchas gracias, Janelis. Thank you very much. And any final comment to the to the to the public, just to say goodbye, ladies. <laughs> Thank you for being here, and uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much for uh, everything. <laughs>